All right, y'all, welcome back. So today we're gonna do my take on, as always, quick and easy, uh, fried rice. Now you can do this with chicken or beef or whatever uh, meat you like, or today I'm just gonna do a vegetable fried rice. Uh, for my vegetables, I'm just using this uh, seasoning blend from uh, Walmart. It's uh, onions, celery, red peppers, green peppers, and parsley flakes. Uh, now this is not your traditional uh, stir fry or fried rice uh, vegetables. Normally I would chop up some onions, maybe do some zucchini and squash, uh, some, I don't know, whatever your take is. You tell me, leave a comment and tell me what your favorite uh, vegetables are when you do fried rice. Uh, along with that, I've got two eggs and about four tablespoons of butter. I normally probably use a little bit more of them when I'm running low, so I wanted to uh, just use what I needed to. Now let's talk about the butter. So, fried rice. With the fried rice, we've got soy sauce, and soy sauce can have a lot of salt in it. So I'm using salted butter, but that's something to be aware of. Now, if you do a lot of baking, I'm sure you have unsalted butter uh, in your fridge because in baking, you really want to control the amount of salt in your recipe. So by using unsalted butter, you know exactly how much salt is in there. With salted butter, uh, unfortunately, you don't know how much salt is in there and also how much salt is in each tablespoon because it's not necessarily uh, equal across the entire stick of butter. So it's something to be aware of. And if you're baking, then you know that. All right, uh, I've got my rice here. And my rice, I uh, pre-cooked it. Now, the important thing with rice, a lot of people want to know, well, how do I keep my rice from sticking? So there, there's two things that you want to look at when you are uh, not want your rice to stick. One is the length of the grain. So the shorter the grain, the more sticky the rice is going to be. That's why sushi rice is, has really short grain on it. The longer grain doesn't stick as much, but the also important part is before you cook it, you rinse it. So if you have a, a sift or a sieve, yeah. Uh, whatever you want to call it. Colander, but I wouldn't be careful with your colander because rice will go through it. Uh, but you want to rinse it until that water comes clear. Uh, usually, I don't know, two three minutes under uh, cold water. Uh, so I did that. This is a half a cup of uncooked rice, one whole cup of water, and I think I did two or three tablespoons of butter in there. Uh, I like butter. What can I say? I'm southern. So, got our rice, our veggies, our eggs, butter, uh, I'm cheating today, even though I have a bunch of garlic in there that I could chop up. I've got this jar of minced garlic that I like to use because it's quick and easy. And in my rice, I've already put it in there, but I've got the sweet cooking rice seasoning. And, as always, a little bit of sesame seeds. Get that extra toasted sesame flavor. Now, my sauce here, if you can, I don't know if you can zoom in and see this, but floating on top here is my sesame oil. And down here is a mix of soy sauce and teriyaki sauce. Uh, the exact proportions, I eyeball it. Uh, it's more soy than teriyaki, and it's uh, just a little bit of uh, sesame oil. Now, a lot of people will not add the sesame oil until the very end cooking because they don't want to get a burnt sesame oil flavor. You want to get that toasted sesame flavor. Uh, but I think we're going to be okay doing this. I've done it a few times. I think we're all right. So, to start out, I'm going to hopefully open this bag because I didn't bring a knife out with me today. Oh, look at that. Whoa. And, oh, and on the black stone, I've got this half was on high and this half is on low. So I want the high for my veggies. And I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit of oil down here, even though my I preheated and pre oiled the uh, black stone pretty well. And I'm going to go ahead and just put this whole bag. That has been in the freezer for a while and it's got a lot of moisture in it, so it had a lot of ice, but maybe a little freezer burnt. But I'm using up some, uh, some freezer items. So I'm moving these veggies around because that ice that's on there is melting off and it's cooling the, the black stuff, or the brittle, doesn't necessarily have to be a black stuff. So I'm moving around to the hot spots. And then I think just about all that ice is melted. So I'm going to make me a good old spot here, let that get hot for just a second. And I'm going to actually smooth it down a little bit, spread it around. 
And then we're going to move our veggies back up there. Put a little more oil back here where that water was. And it's just more to protect the griddle than it is anything, although I'll probably move the veggies back there as they cook. I'm going to spread them out a little bit also. All right, so those are going to cook on high. So I want to get them good and roasted, sauteed, and I'm going to let the, uh, the onions get fairly translucent. I'll just make sure everything fries up nice. Shake this up real good. Just put a little bit on there for now. We'll add a little more later. Now, that's it. That going. This side's on low. So I'm going to do my eggs on low. Now here's something I learned when you go to the hibachi, or the, yeah, hibachi places. You know, they do all the fancy show with the eggs and all that. So in order to cook these without having to go wash my hands, cross-contamination and all that, that's why they do the fancy way of breaking them. So I'm going to try this. I haven't done it before. Let's see how it works out. So I will, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to drop the egg on it, the first one. Oh, look at that. And then, take that egg out. Turn the shell. I'm not touching the inside of the shell. Okay, that was a little more difficult than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and this one we'll try doing it that way. Oh, there we go. That's a little better. So there. Oops. So I got a little egg on the outside. At least not want not. Right? Just try to get that off without getting any shell in there. And looks like I did get a little bit of shell on that yolk. So my hibachi skills need some practice. Oh, there it is. Come here, you. Them, but I do like to get them all mixed up. Almost like a like cross between fried hard and scrambled. So we'll let those cook for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and turn this last, this far left eye off because that's going to be my cold warm spot. Broken up and cooked there. All right, let those continue to cook. I'm going to add a little bit of my sauce mix on the eggs. veggies. I'll sink it up. Now I'm going to flip our veggies. Make sure that they're getting cooked all the way around. I didn't flip them all. That's all right. Not a big deal. Now one thing I'm going to check because before I came out to cook, my propane tank feels pretty low. So I'm going to keep checking my flames to make sure that I'm not losing my heat. So the eggs look like they should be just about finished. Alright, so I'm going to move those over here. That way they stay warm. So I don't get them well done. These are looking pretty good. That's still on high. I'm going to go ahead and take this eye, or this burner, up to high also. Because we're getting ready to add the rice. Now 
I'm just moving these veggies around to the different hotter parts of the griddle to get them to cook just a little bit faster. It's like I talked about before, as you add cold food to the griddle, it's going to pull the griddle down for, until it can recover its uh, temperature again. Now the key to good fried rice is making sure your rice is cold and your griddle's hot. So, our veggies are looking pretty good. They'll finish cooking while they're in with the rice. I'm going to take my stick of butter and start unwrapping it here. Go ahead and throw it right here in the middle. That'll start melting, and then we're going to add our rice. I'm just going to add the rice right on top of that butter. Break up this rice a little bit. It's not super sticky. Uh, where it was in the fridge, it kind of cooled together. So, let it kind of break up there. On our eggs. Put our butter back in the middle. Now, the first couple of times I tried fried rice, I cooked the eggs in with the rice. And I mean, it turned out the taste was okay, but the texture was wrong. Uh, the eggs really just attached themselves to the rice and made the rice super sticky because of the eggs. So that's where I, I learned to cook the eggs first and then add them to the rice. Get our veggies in there. These three burners are our hot ones, so I'm going to move this rice over here towards the middle. So I'm also going to use that opportunity to mix everything together while I'm moving. That butter is still in there melting. Spread it out real good. Turn the spatula off. A little bit of oil, make sure it's cooking good, although the butter should be doing most of the trick. I'll go ahead and do our first round of my soy sauce mixture here. Now I'm not doing the garlic and the sesame seed yet, those will be one of the last things I do. What I'm really looking for is to see this rice start to really fry and kind of crisp up a little bit, on, especially on the edges. Spread it out and I'll fold it back over onto itself. That'll help stir it up and get all those flavors all the way through. You can see the color starting to come into it that everybody's probably familiar with that fried rice color. Spread it back out. There you go. I'm going to let it cook. And the good thing with this, as opposed to a wok, is you can spread it out real good. You don't have to continually stir it like you do in a wok. All I gotta do is make sure the bottom doesn't get burned before the top gets done. So that's cooking pretty good. I'm gonna add our garlic. Now garlic you typically just add to cook until you can uh, start to smell the garlic. The aromatic. Another good thing about this is it's got the, the juices in there, so it's a little extra flavor. So I'm just going to sprinkle that around. If there's a couple of big chunks, that's okay, because I'm going to mix it all up again anyways. And we'll go ahead and add our sesame seeds. And I'm pretty liberal with the sesame seeds. I like the sesame seed. And it's already got the sesame oil in there, so you don't have to worry about a lot of flavor from your sesame seeds, but I do like the extra. So there we go. Same thing we did last time. I'm just going to turn it all in on itself. Make the pile bigger. And then flip the whole thing. And 
spread her back out. There we go, it's starting to look really good, isn't it? Definitely got the right colors. So now we're just cooking for texture. So texture is important. Some people get really picky about texture when they eat. And that's where we get that rice actually fried, which is where the butter and the oil comes in. And you can see it bubbling. It's all frying really good right now. Make sure my burners are still going. And they are. We are going to have enough gas for this cook. Or enough propane. Propane is a gas. So I guess I wasn't wrong when I said gas. Alrighty. Usually the onions are the best judge of when everything's done. But you can also kind of look at the edges of the rice. And it looks like it's starting to crisp up real nice. So, I'm going to call that just about done. So you can see it's pretty quick and easy. I'm grab my serving bowl, and this is what I'm not going to eat, so that can go in the fridge for later. And then we'll see about that. That's somewhere about half. out of the way. I'm ready to eat though. I'm hungry. It just smells amazing. Alrighty. There's that bowl. Pretty it up a little bit for presentation. Whoops, made a mess. Turn my griddle off here. And I'll go ahead and give it a little scrape because I see some areas that you know, where the eggs were. And I'll leave some of this oil over there. Give it a chance to coat it a little bit. So if y'all haven't noticed that eggs will really pick up everything on the surface along with flavors so be careful what you cook before your eggs and how well you clean up. I'm not putting a lot of pressure when I scrape so I'm wondering just getting the big stuff off. Now I'll come back after I'm done eating and I'll uh, give it a good wipe down, re-oil it and then uh, get the temperature up enough to polymerize that oil that I put on there. Alrighty, so there's our bowl of fried rice. You have a good look there. Yeah. Alright, let's see how she tastes. It's going to be super hot. Oh yeah, that's good. That's funny. Yeah. Just the right amount of sauce. Almost too much butter, so I guess I was good with the four tablespoons. Mm. Yeah, good flavor. I like the peppers and onions in there. It's a little, a little different, but it definitely uh, gives it some good flavor. Yeah, good job. Alright, good job me. 
All right, so there you have it. There's quick and easy fried rice. I'm not sure what the total cook time on that was, but it didn't feel like it very long. So make sure you all uh, like and share this video. Subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment down there and tell me what you like in your fried rice. Tell me if you saw something that I did wrong or different, or maybe I gave you something, some new information. Let me know. I like to hear that stuff. So until next time, y'all keep cooking.